that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered right. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. The doctor of the law said, the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise the gospel of the Lord. And Jesus said to him, you have answered right. 
Do this and you will live. But the lawyer took his answer one step farther. He wanted to justify himself, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe he needed a little bit more depth and understanding to this most special question. He didn't have a problem with the first commandment of loving God, but the second commandment, he asked of Jesus, who is my neighbor? We find that the word neighbor is defined as a person who lives near or next door. But in today's world, are we not all neighbors? I think Jesus, in teaching the parable of the Good Samaritan, causes us to pause and consider our own understanding on the value of loving others. In contrast, we have seen in our world so much anger, hatred, and division. People setting themselves higher and above the decency of loving and helping others. Most of us have seen the images of Hurricane Dorian, a Category 5, and said to be one of the greatest hurricanes, if not the greatest and strongest in the Atlantic. To be honest with you, when I first saw the utter destruction that took place on Abaco Island, as well as the Grand Bahamas, I said, oh my God, and I cried. Nothing left standing, everything destroyed. One des survivor described the scene as a bomb going off. The images of the faces of desperate people crying out, help us, save us, brings to mind the scene of the Good Samaritan. In the early hours and days after Hurricane Dorian tore through the Bahamas, the first government rescuers many residents saw were not from the Bahamian government, but from the government of the United States. The United States Coast Guard helicopters cut through the skies to evacuate the sick and the wounded and the distribution of emergency supplies of food, water, and medicine that came were mostly coordinated by a network of volunteers from the Bahamian and the American nonprofit groups. Foreign governments such as the United States and Great Britain have been present from the beginning and the Caribbean Relief Agency, which is made up of 18 countries, have been working behind the scenes on a response plan. It has enlisted the assistance of foreign governments, the United Nations, aid organizations, and agencies such as the American Red Cross and the Church World Service to help bind up the physical, mental, and emotional wounds that have scarred so many. Even cruise ships have played a part, canceling their passenger cruises to help deliver the basic necessities of survival. A neighbor helping a neighbor, a stranger helping a stranger. Whether it be hurricanes like Dorian Maria or Katrina, or other natural disasters such as tornadoes, or terrorist attack like our country experienced 18 years ago on 9-11. There have always been those good Samaritans who have reached out to help total strangers. Whenever a disaster strikes, it does bring out the worst of individuals but also the best. But my brothers and sisters, it is those good Samaritans who come out of love that a ray of sunshine comes forth with the message, we care. In reality, are we not all created 
in the image and likeness of God, irregardless of, our, of the color of our skin, or our religious preferences, or other factors. I think that this feast of brotherly love can be summed up in the words of Jesus as we find in the Gospel of St. John when he teaches, This is a new commandment that I give unto you. Love one another as I have loved you. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, on this feast of brotherly love, May we all reach out whenever and wherever we can to show the kindness and the love that God has given unto us. Abraham Lincoln summed up this kindness and love when he wrote, We are not enemies, we are friends. Though passion may have been strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory will swell when again touched, and surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. May we all take the story of the Good Samaritan to heart on this feast of brotherly love when it comes to helping one another in the love of Christ which was shown to us. May we realize that it is not only in loving God, but also loving our neighbor as ourselves, that we truly will inherit eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus be praised, now and forevermore. Amen.
us who bow before you in contrition and humility, and grant that the sacrifice be so offered in your sight as to be pleasing to you, Lord God. Come, sanctifier, almighty and eternal God, and bless this sacrifice, prepare it for the glory of your holy name. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in the remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of His holy church. Amen. Let us pray. All loving Father, your Son taught us to love you and our brothers and sisters. May this offering serve to bring us closer to you and to one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, receive the gifts and prayers we offer this day as we prepare to remember the 18th anniversary of 9-11. Through your love for your creation, give us strength and faith to endure the tragedies that are ever before us. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts we offer to you in faith and trust for our brother John Mashashek. May he ever be close to you in perpetual light as you have granted unto him eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. the love we have for each other all will know that we are the Lord's disciples therefore on this day we join with the voices of the seraphim the cherubim the archangels and all your angels with all the saints in the entire church and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory repeating humbly holy holy holy, holy Lord God our Christ, your Son, 
and our Lord to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you. In the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. We pray this day for all the victims of Dorian, for all the families who experienced tragedy during the 9-11 attacks, for all the first responders who have come down sick due to working at the World Trade Center. We pray for the hungry, the homeless. We pray for the sick, the sad, the dying, and the disassociated. For all those who serve in our military forces and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his <laughs> infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty, 
from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servant John Meshachan, as well as all those who have lost their lives during Dorian, as well as all those who lost their lives on 9-11, all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives Pattern after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. <coughs> in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine in example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul and also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May 
this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world, by your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive the Receive the body and the Receive the body and the Receive the body and the 
Receive the body of Christ. 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 Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet memorial of the Lord. We are united with our brother Jesus who rose from the dead. 
May our brother John Mishashik, whose anniversary of death we honor, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. that there are seven crosses that are marked 
on a bell to remember the baptism that we all enter into the faith in Christ. The interesting thing that I did not know is that Holy Chrism, the only time that Holy Chrism is given unto an individual, three times. When you are baptized, when you are confirmed, and when one is elevated to that of the priesthood. What I did find out is that the ritual prescribes that the inside of the bell be marked with Holy Chrism at the four points of the compass, north, south, east, and west. And that every time that this bell is rung, we pray for the sick and we pray for peace. And so, it's a beautiful bell. Um, it did not say made in China. Mm. And so, <laughs> so I, I consider this a, a most special gift. And again, whenever the bell is rung, that we will remember not only our sick, but also all of us who are baptized into the faith. I think it was Wayne who told me, you know, Father, they made pretty good bells over in Tibet and over in Mongolia. So, just a couple of announcements. Following this Mass, there will be a, a special collection in the back of the church. I did put this in the bulletin, and we will carry it over for another week. A special collection for the victims of Dorian. Also today, during our prayers, we'll re be remembering the victims of 9-11, that tragedy that took place. And in the bulletin, I had pointed out a few of the facts of what took place on 9-11. On Tuesday, there is a teleconference that I will be participating in for the School of Christian Living. When we say School of Christian Living, it is not just for children, but we also want to de develop a School of Christian Living for adults. Ah, oh, let's see, a couple of things. Weekday Holy Mass intentions, and please, in your prayers. On Monday, there will be the Solemnity of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On Tuesday, we will offer a Mass on the World Suicide Prevention Day. On Wednesday here in church, there will be a special Mass on the 18th anniversary of 9-11. And the other solemnity uh, for this week will be on Saturday, which is the Solemnity of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Next Sunday after Holy Mass, there will be an informal continental breakfast that will be offered to all who participate and not only in Sunday service, but also the invitation to come into the parish hall. It's a little gift being returned for appreciation for all the work that holy name of Jesus, the parishioners have, have done over the years. And it is only right and fitting that after our celebration of the 90th anniversary, that a little something, a little thank you should be returned. I wish to thank the ladies, uh, to Peg and to Alice, and I think was, and Pat Blakesley, who changed our altar linens from the gold, which we celebrated the 90th, back to the liturgical color that we are presently in. Uh, green, and green symbolizes hope. I also wish to thank my dear sisters in the choir uh, for beautiful, you know, years ago in the early church, they didn't have organs where they kind of transported it from one to the other, but uh, from one place to another. But we read in the Acts of the Apostles that they came together in fellowship, in prayer, and in song. So ladies, I appreciate it. I also, we talk about neighbors helping each other. Well, as most of you know, our organist, Barbara Stahelski, uh, placed her resignation that took place on August 25th of this year. So I'm going to call upon you. You sound pretty good from where I'm standing. <laughs> so if you can, please contribute um, your voice as they did in the early Christian church. And finally, uh, and I hope I covered all, all the bases, this afternoon uh, at St. Joseph's Parish in Westfield, they will be holding their doshinki. It will be from 12 o'clock until 5. And if your time permits, please, and please come out to St. Joseph's and to give support to our sister parish. Are there any other announcements? Mary Ann.
Father, may we say prayers, please, for um, LaDonna Rohage, Pastor Ministry. Any other intentions? That it is only right and proper that we pray for the living as well as for the deceased. May the name of Jesus be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of all those who lost their lives at the 9-11 attacks, for all those who have lost their lives during the recent Hurricane Dorian, for John Rashashik and for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.